A town is full of buildings, some tall, some short, some wide, and some narrow. The buildings are flats and houses and factories and shops. They're built in streets. The streets have cars and buses and lorries driving along them. The cars and buses and the streets are full of people. In fact, there are a lot of people in a town. Do you live in a town? Welcome back to another video. You join me today having breakfast with my friend Lewis. Um, we're on a bit of a mission today, aren't we? We are. Yeah, we're going into Manchester in a bit and we're going to try and do something. Should we be doing it? I don't yeah. know if we should be doing it or not. Yeah. Are we going to close an airport down? Yeah, possibly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to try and close the airport down, Manchester Airport. Anyway, we're just having this uh, mighty fine English breakfast and then we're going off into Manchester. Just stay tuned. So just before we go to Manchester, I thought I'd tell you about this video. It's a bit of a stripped down basic video, more of a vlog today, because I am actually working on another video, a follow up to the coal video, you know, the Jubilee Colliery. But today's just a bit of a, an out and about thing. And um, we're on Lewis's mission, and I want to follow up on a couple of videos I've done. Somebody sent me some information, so I want to go into Manchester and have a look at something. But just before we go into Manchester, we're in we're in Lewis's back garden, and he's got a little shed. He's got a, a man shack, a shed shack. <laughs> I'd like one of these, to be honest with you. And he does his YouTube videos from in here. He's all about radio and, and things like that. He does, it's ham radio. Now, I'm not into ham radio at all, but it's kind of interesting. So let's go and take a look inside the man shack, the shed shack, the ham radio shack. Where will you see all the radios in here, I'm telling you. Can we come in? Oh yeah, come in. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and this is your uh, shed shack, is it? This is the shed shack. Yeah. This is where all the tennis radio goes. This is where the magic happens. happens. This is where all goes So we've got on. a little doggy here, we've got, um, what's she called? Called Luna. Chambubu. <laughs> Luna. <laughs> Luna. The Luna the Chihuahua. Hello. You've never seen as many radios in your life. I'll just show you. Look at this. He's a bit of a hoarder. <laughs> Look at this lot. There's more behind here. Oh, BT tele telephone. More That's radio. Awesome. What's that? That's a marine radio. Oh, for a, on a boat. Yeah, this is all the old stuff. Right, and then some more there. Some more there, and then more radios here. <coughs> Look at this lot, and these people send you these for free, do they? Uh, yeah, some of them, not all of them, some of them. So people send, well, Chinese companies sending these radios to review, and he, he it's obviously the people that watch his channel <coughs> are mad on radio, so he does <laughs> reviews on these uh, radios. I can't watch them. I'm sorry. <laughs> You'll sit and talk about a radio for about. This is new. You 20 know, minutes. Is <laughs> 20 minutes on a radio. You always tell me you loved them. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah. I just put a thumbs up on and go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a niche hobby. Yeah, it is a bit of a niche hobby. Anyway, uh, what's that over there? Do you remember the old rabbit phones? When were they out, rabbit phones? Early 90s, around 91, 92. It's a Manchester yeah. phone system as well. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you remember Rabbit? So he's got some of the old Rabbit phones here as well. Remember those those signs? They used to be out sh outside shops, that's, didn't they? Sorry, that's actually actually a real sign, that, from a, a place in Stockport. You got that from a shop, didn't you? Yeah. And there... Uh, was these the, the first mobiles or something? But uh, Basically, you had the base station in your house and a handset or two, and if you went to a shop that had one of these signs up, it would turn that into sort of a mobile phone, but for receive only. Receive so only. It was sort of like a, a sort of like a poor man's, for want of a better word, a poor man's mobile phone. I'm I'm midway making a video on this. So <laughs> my research is a little bit sketchy. But right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think you can find any, any, anyone. But yeah, there was there was thousands of base stations around the UK. Right. And but, that's where you saw the rabbit sign, obviously. 
Yeah, but it was all, it all came out too late. If it had been five years earlier, it would have been amazing, but it came out a couple of years too late. And Just when mobile phones were taken yeah, off. Yeah, exactly, when mobile phones became affordable, yeah. So the forerunner to mobile phones, weren't it? <clears throat> I don't think I got my first mobile. I think it was late, late 90s. No, no, it would have been mid 90s because I had a job where I needed a mobile phone. Yeah. Cheap on eBay, didn't you? Charity oh, shop. Charity shop? Yeah, charity shop. How much was that? The 250 quid, it got, I got it for 15 quid. 250 quid, it got 15 quid. And now he's reproducing <coughs> 80s classics, 70s, 70s classics. So we've just left the Shed Shack, we're now in Manchester. We're right in the centre of Manchester and behind us there is the UMIS building, University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology. Um, so we're in the, in the university campus basically. Why are we here? Why have you brought me down here? Well basically I'm doing some research for a bit of a short documentary that I'm doing um, around, um, I won't say too much, but it's about around the old radio club that used to meet up in the UMIS building back in the, well from the 60s to the 80s, 90s onwards, so right yeah. So it was, so he's into radio ham radio and this was a ham radio club that yeah. met up in there yeah 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 it was and you're doing amateur radio society. some kind of documentary on it yeah from when the 60s from the like from the late 50s onwards and well, what we're trying to do i want to see there's there's, there's rumoured to be aerial still on the roof so i want to send the drone up and see if they're up there still you see this is how geeky it gets right <laughs> it's, it's I, really sad, yeah, yeah. I like i go in rivers right and look at manholes and he wants to see an aerial on the roof of that building yeah, there. Sticks of metal on the roof. They've been yeah. up there for 40 years though. In Have all they? this weather, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I'm hoping they're still there. We're going to see. Well, hopefully. So we've come all the way down to Manchester with a drone, right? Let, let's show them. With this thing here. Sorry, right? you better tell them why we've, why we've done it twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm done. While we're here. <laughs> we've come all the way to town with this drone, basically for him to film an aerial on the roof and because he was going up with the drone in town whoa we nearly lost the camera <laughs> i said we want to see my channel wants to see some of the aerial footage so hopefully we'll get to see some of the aerial footage so yeah so why have we come down twice because i <laughs> set the drone up about an hour ago and realized i forgot to bring the controller so we've been down here once once already get all of that we get all the way down here and of course when you have a drone the crucial Crucial remote controller you have to have with you. I didn't. And he forgot it. It was in the wardrobe. Anyway, right, we're going to go over here now, just to the other part of this um, other side of the building now. See if we can fly the drone. I'm hoping there's no security around. Do you think we can get it up? I don't know. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't think we should be flying it, but there's no. We're just going to do it. Try and do an up and a down. Um, so with a bit of luck, we won't get told off. Yeah, okay. You know, and you shouldn't, but you do, and. It's all in the name of YouTube, isn't you, it? Yeah, you, you're a long time dead. Yeah. Anyway, let's go and see if we can do it.
okay, we'll see if we're in. Yeah, we're in. Did you get what you wanted? I got more than what I wanted. Really? Yeah, really impressed. Yeah. We'll... So you got you got the money shot. Yeah, your heart was in your mouth then, wasn't it? Yeah, because I was. <laughs> You're more worried about my drone than me. Yeah. Yeah, because I always get really nervous when when you look up. I'm going, bring it home now, bring it yeah. home. <laughs> you need to land yeah, it. Well, good. you got you got what you wanted to get. I got more than what I wanted to get. I'm really really happy. That, right. Okay. That, that, exceeded my expectations okay so and, and apparently he's going to let us have a little sneak peek at what he got so uh that'll be quite good won't it now while we were up in the air getting the drone footage you may have noticed this thing here on the top of the Yumis building. Now I must admit I have seen it before from ground level but I've never really wondered a great deal about what it was. Um, that is the Godly Observatory. I'll tell you about it now, I've got a closer picture of it for you. So it dates to about 1902-1903. It was presented by or built for the university with money from uh, a Mr Francis Godley. Now he was a very rich mill owner lots of interest in lots and lots of different things apparently he was uh, he was into things like obviously stargazing horse racing and he had an x-ray machine at his house and if you went to visit him he'd x-ray your hand for you and let you have a look at it sounds fascinating doesn't it believe it or not amazingly that dome on the roof as i'm reading this is made of papier mache now it's, it's almost unbelievable, you wouldn't think it would you, but it's actually made of papier-mâché and it's withstood the elements for all these years. I'm guessing it's got some sort of coating on and I'm guessing it's papier-mâché so it's so light. But uh, I kid you not, as I read about the Godly uh, Observatory, it's telling me it's got a papier-mâché dome. Amazing stuff. Anyway, there you go, a bit of a trivia for you. So we're just on, we thought we'd come down to the Northern Quarter in Manchester, we're just on Dale Street and they've been filming, believe it or not, was it Spider-Man 2? A sp one of the Spider-Man films here in Manchester and it's set in New York and all around the kind of like film crews and there's a lot of smoke. I'll just have a walk around and show you. New York mailboxes and fire hydrants on the streets of Manchester. It was all quite exciting to be honest with you. It's quite odd to see these things on the streets of Manchester. It really was. And there was uh, the these these people here are all extras and what they're gonna do, they're waiting for the go-ahead to walk across the end of that alleyway and they're they are just gonna be people in the distance. Because the place where they're actually filming is up the alleyway there. You'll see the smoke there, they're trying to recreate obviously the steam from the streets of New York and everything. But like I say, the filming is going on up that alleyway where you see all the smoke coming down. Extras there with blankets on. And that's where they were actually filming up there. Now that's featured in one of my videos, that. I don't know if there's any big stars being uh, filmed. Uh, really, I'm not up to speed with who's in this film at all. And a great big blue screen. So I presume that was for some sort of effect or to mask something, they were going to obviously put some sort of compute CGI's on, on, on that. So it's quite good to see like a big like international film crew like you know in Manchester it's really good filming a massive production. Um, but I think it's been used around there before for New York streets because some of the buildings actually resemble some of the buildings in New York apparently. Um, so yeah it's quite, quite a Quite an interesting, exciting thing to see.
Now, one of the things I wanted to do in Manchester was to take Lewis to the Science and Industry Museum, and that's where we were just filming that uh, wonderful old truck that you've just been looking at. But we wanted to go down there because uh, George and Robert Stevenson's locomotive rocket is there. Built in 1829, the original rocket is on display at Manchester's um, Science and Industry Museum. And it's the first time it's been in Manchester for many, many, many years. I think, it's, I think it said it's 180 years since it's been in Manchester. Um, now, it was built in 1829, but the rocket that we see today on display was actually, technology was moving forward so much that within 18 months, rocket was substantially rebuilt. It was uh, modified and rebuilt within 18 months. Um, obviously to keep it up to date, so it, cause it had a working life on the Liverpool to Manchester railway. But also interestingly, rocket was the locomotive that killed the MP, William Huskisson. When they did the Rainhill trials and they, all these locomotives, these initial forerunners for the steam locomotives all competed against each other. You can imagine there was a lot of people there, a lot of dignitaries, and uh, there was a group of MPs and William Huskisson was one of those MPs. And I think what had happened was, they'd got off the carriages and were having a stand around and a chat. And um, they saw Rocket coming in the distance. Now don't forget Rocket traveled, the average speed was 12 miles an hour top speed was 30 miles an hour. So I don't know what speed it was doing, but it was coming towards them. So the MPs scrambled and the dignitaries scrambled and got back onto this particular train they were on. Poor old William Huskisson was quite a portly chap. I think he was last back onto the train and the, the, the door of the, um, the carriage swung open and he fell out back onto the track and Rocket hit his leg. I think it says it either chopped through his leg or it cut his leg off. Anyway, they got, they got poor old William Huskisson back on the train and I think they raced him back towards Manchester uh, in search of a doctor. By the time they got to Manchester, um, William Huskisson was dead. So, one little side story there about Rocket. So yeah, two interesting things. It's been substantially re rebuilt and it was the locomotive that not only won the Rainhill Trials, but it killed William Huskisson. Anyway, interesting fact for you there, and I just thought I'd show you Rocket as it is now in the, uh, the Science and Industry Museum. And looking at it, all those wonderful panels that have been riveted and beaten together somewhere in the early 1830s. It's quite a sight to see when you, when you imagine the history behind that locomotive. Absolutely fantastic. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed the video. A bit more of a vlog style video today. Um, I mainly wanted to make a video because Lewis was getting that drone footage in Manchester um, and I wanted to go out with him and he said he'd let me have a sneak preview of the footage. So I wanted some drone, vi some drone footage of Manchester for you again and uh, it was pretty spot on. It's also a simple video because I'm currently working on the sequel to uh, the coal mine video I did. If you remember the video about Jubilee Colliery, uh, that was called Coal. Well, I'm working in the next few days on the, the sort of sequel to that, if you like. And this next one is called Gas. Uh, so I've got some, uh, I've got another story to tell you about industry and things like that, following on from the coal mine video that we did. Also, what I've done is a few people have been talking to me and saying that they want to send me the odd thing, like some photographs, maps and things like that. Um, so I'm setting up a PO box. Now I've actually, it's bloody expensive. It's quite a lot of money just for six months. So I'm gonna trial it for six months. Um, me and Lewis are gonna share the cost and he's gonna do it for his channel as well. So when I get the um, PO box address, um, they've not sent it to me yet. I'll do, um, I'll put something on the community tab. I'll put like a little, little announcement out uh, so if you do want to send me anything, I know a few of you, like I said, mentioned that they want to send me maps and pictures and stuff. I've got a PO box coming up soon, so if you want to, if anything interesting you want to send me, you can do. And I'll open it on the on camera, and we'll have a little mail time type thing. So there you go. So um, next video probably will be gas. We've got a PO box coming up. I think it'll take about a week before I know the actual address, and. 
I hope you didn't mind this quick vlog style video. I shall see you very soon in the next video. Bye for now.